Warning! This video contains frank discussion of matters of sexual morality. Just thought you might want to know. Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. So far, we've talked about the first five commandments, and now it's time to tackle the sixth, Thou shalt not commit adultery. This time, lust. What is it? Is lust part of the prohibition of the sixth commandment? Obviously, before we make any judgments about whether lust is forbidden under this commandment, we should know exactly how it's defined. As usual, the Catechism sets forth an excellent definition. Lust is disordered desire for, or inordinate enjoyment of, sexual pleasure. Sexual pleasure is morally disordered when sought for itself, isolated from its procreative and unitive purposes. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2351. This definition is absolutely fantastic, because in these very few words, it tells us what precisely lust is and what it's not. You just need to study the words themselves to understand what they mean. To start with, the phrases disordered desire and inordinate enjoyment, these are meant in the philosophical sense of disordered, meaning out of the proper order. For example, putting the number 3 between numbers 5 and 6 would be to arrange the numbers in a disordered way. This is the sense in which the words disordered and inordinate are meant in the Catechism. Because of this, when the Catechism says that we can have a disordered desire for sex, or an inordinate enjoyment of it, it doesn't mean that we're not supposed to desire or enjoy sex. What it means is that there are other things that we should want even more. For example, we should want to be united to our loved ones. We should want the opportunity to bring forth new life. We should want to sacrifice for the sake of others, because that's the only way we'll ever reach our own potential as human beings, the only way to draw closer to God. All of these things are summed up magnificently in the last sentence of paragraph 2351. Sexual pleasure is morally disordered when sought for itself. Sought for itself? Yes, because when it's sought for itself, the pleasure is sought in the wrong order. Carnal pleasure is a good thing, but it's not the highest good, not by a long shot. When we act as though it were, we're acting in a disordered way. That's the nature of lust. Lust can be an action, a word, or even just a thought, and it's only lust if it involves this, the prizing of the carnal pleasure of sex as the highest good of the sexual act, or even the only one that's desired. However, there's one more distinctive trait of lust. Lustful actions, words, and thoughts are always sexual in some way. They may be oriented towards sex, centered around sex, motivated by sex, it doesn't really matter which, but it has to be at least one of those. Unless the choice that the person makes is in some way a sexual choice, it doesn't fall under the sin of lust. So, from an examination of the definition of lust found in the Catechism, we've discovered three things about it. 1. Lustful decisions always involve desiring a lesser aspect of sex, such as pleasure, more than a greater aspect, such as unity with a loved one. 2. Lustful decisions always involve sex or sex-based motives on at least some level. 3. A lustful decision can be any action, word, or thought, as long as it conforms to those criteria. In fact, deliberately encouraging temptations to lust could even be viewed as a lustful choice itself. I know I view it that way, although the Catechism doesn't specifically seem to have any teaching on this point. Finally, as we said last episode, to reject the full goodness of the sexual act is to treat one's own body disrespectfully, to abuse it. Lustful decisions are all about this, and that's why every last one of them is against the Sixth Commandment. Next time, what's masturbation, and does it fall under the Sixth Commandment? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.